So this recipe is a little different for me. Normally when I'm in the kitchen crafting up something, I'm wondering, has anyone ever done this before? Can it be done? Or I'm following a recipe from a vintage cookbook. I've never really done anything inspired by a person. So this recipe is inspired by my father. When I was a little kid, we would always go to Little Bad Island on the weekends and get the strawberry Romanoff. And it is, ugh absolutely addicting. So now whenever he comes to visit from the UK, I make it a point to pick some up and bring it home so we can still enjoy that tradition. But the last time he was here, I got to thinking, this would make an amazing ice cream. <laughs> so I had an opportunity recently, Wiggins Berry Farm here where I live, was really preparing for a big storm that we were about to have. And they said, hey, people, we need to come pick some strawberries. We gotta get the produce out before the rain messes it all up. So I took that opportunity to go help out a farmer and also it was a great chance to learn and create this recipe to take a little tinkering with. But I'm excited to bring it with me this summer when I go see my dad in the UK and get to share this with him. So here is my spin on La Madeleine Strawberry Romanoff in an ice cream form with a pretty boozy twist. If you like strawberries and cream ice cream, you're going to love this one. It's very similar, but it has a far more complex palette. Total showstopper. This berry farm on the outskirts of town was absolutely adorable, but I really didn't have a lot of time to kill. The weather was starting to turn bad, but luckily, they had so many strawberries that it took me about 15 minutes to pick, well, about 10 pounds. <laughs> I had to hightail it home though, but I made it home safe. With any produce, whether you picked it yourself or got it at the store, it is always wise to make sure it is thoroughly cleaned and washed. So I dumped all of my strawberries into my sink and put some vinegar in with the water and just let them soak in. Got any bugs and dirt from anything else off. Prepping strawberries is super easy. You just grab the little hat, I give them a good twist, and then go ahead and rinse them off one more time to make sure we got any of that vinegar water off. And I kept the ones that were a little gross and the strawberry tops to feed to my worms, and that's why I love my bin. Now just lay them out and let them dry. So if you were like me and have a ton of extra berries now, because you went and picked like 10 pounds of berries in 15 minutes during a tornado watch, or maybe just because it's berry season, I'd highly recommend doing this trick at home. So you're gonna wash your berries, dry your berries, and put them in a glass jar and seal the top. Works for all berries, blueberries, raspberries, blackberries, strawberries. People are always asking me like, wow, these berries, whenever I serve them up, are so fresh and delicious and ripe. Where did you get them from? But usually when you buy berry in a store, they're not the best. So you can do this with store-bought too. We're gonna to put the berries inside the jar and it creates kind of like a gas chamber where the gases that ripen the berries get trapped inside. So they don't ever really get past that perfect level of ripeness. And if they're not ripe, they get to that point and stop. Now it's really cool. I'll show you guys. Hopefully you can hear this. <laughs> That is what fresh, delicious red berries sound like. Now that we have our strawberries for our ice cream base, we will need a cup of sour cream, a cup of heavy cream, a cup of whole milk, six egg yolks, three quarter cup of brown sugar, some brandy and vanilla, and a pot to cook it in. Start by separating out your six egg yolks into a small bowl. And then you're gonna measure out three quarter cup of brown sugar and add that in with your egg yolks. Whisk that all together into an interesting concoction and set that aside for a bit. Before things start to get hot, we're gonna to wanna to combine our sour cream and our whole milk and heavy cream. That way they get a chance to kind of break down and mix that fat content together and become one liquid. Add the heat and stir and stir and stir and stir. You kind of want it to get around maybe 130, 140 before we start to add the cream 
into our egg mixture a little bit at a time. Give that a good swirl so it can start to heat up on its own. And then we're gonna slowly add that sugar and egg mixture into our milk base. That way we don't wind up cooking the eggs. It gives it a second for everything to acclimate and get nice and custardy. I'm using a quarter cup of brandy and two teaspoons of vanilla. Now both of those have an alcohol content to them, so you do wanna make sure you cook off a lot of that or else your ice cream won't really freeze. Or you could use less alcohol, it's up to you. So you're gonna to wanna to stir and stir and stir. You can smell that alcohol evaporating out. We wanna to get to about 170 before we do pull our ice cream. So if it takes a little while, that's okay. To speed up our cooling process, I've got two bowls that kind of fit inside of each other. I'm gonna go ahead and strain our ice cream mixture just to get anything out. And then I'm gonna take the second bowl and add that with ice water. You do want your top bowl to kind of cool down a little bit before you stick it in there because it's heat and cold, so be careful. For our strawberry compote, I took the strawberries that were already a little squishy, like super ripe, and put them into my blender and just added a third a cup of sugar over that and let them sit for about an hour. Run them through the blender to make a super, super, super fine frothy puree. And then I took these other berries and I just kind of chunked them up. I cut them into a bunch of different shapes, but small, little tiny pieces of varying sizes because I wanted some actual strawberry pieces inside my strawberry puree. Once I had cut up all my berries, I just dumped them in with the puree and then I added that to a bag and froze it because I wasn't gonna be able to work on it immediately. You don't have to do that, but it does help to kind of break that cell wall down a little bit more. The process of cooking these strawberries down does take a little bit of time, so I did it while I was cleaning up the kitchen one evening. I just popped them in there and went stir and stir and stir until all of that water was really cooking out, and then I added some corn syrup, just two tablespoons, and that's gonna help everything from freezing. It's gonna make it syrupy when it's inside the ice cream. I just kept cooking that down till it kind of looked like jam. I was like, okay, this should be the right amount of water content. I think I'm done. We put it in a container and saved it for later. Such a pretty color and so delicious just like this. So I'm sure you guys have kind of figured out by now that this wasn't gonna be just your average ice cream maker. It was gonna to have to be a vintage one. So I've got my vintage salt and ice cream maker. The cool thing about this is it does not need ice. It does not need salt. It just needs to be plugged in into your freezer. So it pulls in cool air through the top. It rotates. It's got a metal container in the bottom and it's also got this nifty metal cord. So it's got like chain mail on it to keep it from getting crushed. So you just plug it in, set it in your freezer and leave it for about an hour. You can still get these like all over the place I found out on Etsy and eBay and they come in much cuter colors than brown. To open the mixer, you just push on the little locking tabs on the side and the top part comes off to reveal the inside pieces. Our ice cream base has now been chilling in the fridge and has thickened up beautifully. Wow, oh, it's gonna be awesome. At this point, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and remove the plastic cover and start adding your ice cream mix. It was at this point I realized that I probably should have also taken out the paddle mixer because I got it covered in ice cream. The top fits inside of a space where it churns the ice cream, so you should just add it last and keep everything nice and clean and then put your lid back on top. Make sure the grooves of the mixing paddle line up with the top motor of your mixer and just snap it back on. Now we're ready to put it into the freezer and plug it in. So this little motor turns that pan which pulls the cold air in and also rotates our paddle mixer so it's doing all the work for us. So I wanted to show you a little oops moment. This one had too much alcohol. You can still use it. It's more of a milkshake consistency after it's been churning, but it freezes up beautifully. It's really creamy and it does melt a little bit faster. So I scooped that extra boozy out and I wanted to add that back in later. 
Now I'm just adding the strawberry compote into a plastic bag to act as a pastry bag so we can pipe that in between our layers of ice cream. This batch turned out perfect. If you do get a batch with too much alcohol, you can always let it get to room temperature and cook it down a little bit more, but this is what your ice cream should look like. So now we're gonna go ahead and layer our Romanoff ice cream with some of our strawberry compote for our strawberry Romanoff ice cream. Next, I'm just gonna toss in some of the scoops of the extra boozy ice cream I made that I refroze and just layer it with more strawberry and more Romanoff ice cream. This is so good. I really hope you guys try this recipe. Everything is gonna be very soft serving whenever you take it out of the machine, so my recommendation is to put it in a container and freeze it again before you serve it. That way when you scoop everything out, you get those layers in each and every scoop. Hopefully you guys enjoyed coming along the ride of me figuring out this recipe, and maybe it inspired you to do something a little bit more creative and crafty in your own kitchen. If you enjoyed this video, I'd love to have you as a subscriber. But, like always, take care and God bless, and definitely, bon appetit.